the church is becoming weakened. Dependency on man is growing at an alarming rate. And thereby, people are becoming weaker and weaker. And this is a trace, the beginning of high level of deception. If you have to depend, wait for, look for a prophet before you can find or make your direction clear. Something is wrong. Wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. In whatever church that a prophet is reigning, a man prophet is reigning, let that pastor, I challenge that pastor, pastor, preach about Jesus Christ in one month without giving prophecy in that church and see whether those people will stay. The church will empty. They will go. They will all go. You know why? They are not there for Jesus. They are there for consultations. And God has moved on from consultations. God wants relationship. He wants sons and daughters. Am I making sense? And once you become a son or child of God, your life is no longer by prophets. Your life is by faith solely in Jesus. One of my challenges what of the enemies? What of the arrows they are shooting against me? It is not in my place to begin to look for prophet to help me describe where the arrow is from. It is in my place to live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. My faith makes me just over attacks. Secures me over divine, I mean satanic attacks. No matter where the attack is coming from, as long as my faith is in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the attack has failed before it ever landed. No, watch now. We're going somewhere. Do you want me to tell you who is behind your case? Do you want me to tell you the man behind your, this thing? That person has headed for a land of deception. And the person will come back only miserable. So I wrote here, I said, people eventually end up deceived when Jesus alone is not enough for them. I'm going to say that again. People eventually end up deceived when Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone is not enough for them. So check your life. Are you growing or you are stagnant? You may start up with prophets, but as you grow, Jesus alone will become enough. Am I making sense? Who alone will become enough? Jesus. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, Look at the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse number 8. You will put it quickly. Colossians 2, 8. This is very important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. I don't know why he's not putting it in. Put it, put it in. Alright. He said, Beware. Lest any man through philosophy spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. When Jesus alone is not good enough for you, all you will be hearing are things that are men's invention. I think, I think we should look at it in NIV translation. Look at the NIV. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch, watch the NIV. He said, see to it that no one takes you captive through allo and deceptive philosophy. 
because the, the, the game, the game of those preachings and words is to have you arrested, is to take the people as slaves, captive, depending on them. Why should I have you depend on me before you make decision in the morning? A young man wants to marry. He's going to ask prophet, should I marry this person or that person? God will not answer you. Whatever that prophet told you is a lie. It's a lie. Uh, for the spirit himself, bear it witness with our spirit that we are. That we are. Go and marry a, a woman because prophet said I ain't be the person. Go and marry a man because prophet said I ain't be the person. You, are, you, are in, you have entered bondage. Real bondage. Somebody came to me one time and said, sir, um, I want to know whether I should marry this person or, or I should, you know. I, I, you know so, I need, I need your help, sir. He said, you need my help to know who to marry? I said, very simple. The Bible gives criteria on who to marry and who not to marry. He said, don't marry a brother who is sexually immoral. I mean, he can't keep existing inside his uh, zip. He said, don't marry that one. Because after you marry, you will still be running race. Simple. He said, don't marry a brother that is easily given to anger. He said, avoid the one that is easily angered. You don't need prophecy. So find out. Does he get angry quickly? When he gets angry, does he misbehave? Don't marry him. He said, do not marry or be a friend of the one that talks a lot. Because in the midst of words, it's a lie will not be wanting. The person that talks too much is a bloody liar. So don't marry the one that talks too much. And then you are looking for a prophet. Which prophet? He has told us what you should do and not do. But because you are too arrogant to submit to his word, now you are now looking for a man to consult. So that the man can take you in, a, in another route against what he put down for us. Yeah, you will eventually see what you are looking for. Go ask the prophet himself. Him and his wife, they don't fight. The wahala they are going through. All kinds of wahala. <laughs> all kinds of things are going, they are going through in the houses. Am I making sense here? Don't marry a lady. Don't marry a lady because she's beautiful. Or the prophet said, this one is humble. Don't marry a lady. Because the, the man of God said, you need to marry somebody that is prayerful. A prayer warrior. A prayer woman. If you marry a prayer warrior, you will die in war. You will war till you die. What are you talking about? They will war you to the end. Don't ma me marry a prayer warrior. Never. I didn't marry a prayer warrior. One time I started sleeping gradually into prayer warrior. I, I said, never in this house. I don't want a prayer warrior. Anytime she go and hide somewhere, ah, ah, I will enter there and say, say, it's okay, it's okay, stand up. Stand up, stand up. Amen. Praise God. Come on, come on. God has answered your prayer. Don't marry a prayer warrior. They say, don't marry a lady that can't pray. Look, let me tell you. Pray. <laughs> I'm going to show you something in the Bible. We're going somewhere this evening. You know. It's very clear. It doesn't speak to us through prophets anymore. Will this my market move? Will this my market survive? Will this, will this my market bring profit? Say witches and wizards will not stop this my market. He says stop that. He says stop that. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Our faith. Our faith. This market will succeed. The earth is still the Lord's. He said he has appointed Jesus Christ as the heir, the owner of everything. So as your faith is in Jesus, whatever you want in this earth, you are guaranteed you will get it. Somebody say, I received that. But I don't shut up. I'm telling you. Will I make it in this life? Go back to that Hebrews. Because people didn't see it quickly. I'm telling you, you didn't see when I quoted it first. Go back to that Hebrews. Let me show you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Let me show you what you didn't see that time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everyone, look at this. He said, He said, in time past,
God who at in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. The reason God was speaking through the prophet was because they needed to be assured that they will get that victory. Sir, see vision for us. Should we go to this war? Because we are not guaranteed whether we will fight and we will win. What of the Jebusites? What of the uh, uh, um, Amorites? The Amalekites? Would we defeat them? That's why they go and look for a prophet. So the prophet will now consult and now tell them, go, the Lord your God is with you. God said, that was okay then. He said, but I changed my plan now. You don't have to go to a prophet to know you will win. As a matter of fact, you don't need to peep into the realm of the spirit to know that you will win. Am I making sense here? You like it or not, victory is your portion. It's an inheritance. So what is the guarantee of the victory? Look at verse 2. Look at the... Aya! Look at, look at. He said, now he has, in this last day, spoken to us by his son. By his son. Now, what is the benefit of his son? He said, the benefit of his son. What? The son is greater and better than prophet. Is that the son himself has been made the heir of all things. Edwin, are you seeing this thing? He said, don't go to prophet. Leave that one. He used to consult to find out whether you will win or you will not win. He said, right now, I've changed it. I speak to people now through my son. You know why? My son has been, everything has been handed over to him. So you don't need to consult again. You don't need to peep into the realm of the spirit whether you will win the Amalekite or not. No! Everything that included the Amalekite, they've been handed over to my son. So your faith in my son guarantees you victory. Abadayandes. I'm not making sense here. Look, it does, everybody may know how you started. They can't predict how you are going to end. Because right now, the earth is the Lord. Everything has been handed over to Jesus. And so God is demanding that everybody should both know Jesus and put their faith in Jesus. He said, don't let them deceive you with philosophy. Then deceit, lies, what they conjure from their mind. That's why they are always having instruments to give to people. Bring the sand from your street. Bring apple. Carry, carry. I, I even heard that you were hollering on the internet. I said, I, I, when they showed me, it was one man that was showing me. I said, I'm proud of this apostle. He's a born again apostle. He was he hollered. The woman carrying fruit and throwing to people on the road. And everybody's grabbing it. Some of you, if we are not there now, with all this knowledge, you will still be grabbing fruit. If I if I catch you collecting fruit from anybody, are you hearing what I'm saying? They should be coming to collect fruit from us. We don't collect from anybody. Am I talking to somebody here? We know he whom we have believed and we are persuaded. That whatever we have committed into his hands, he's able to keep it. Look, yesterday, me and Mama were telling, we were telling our children, telling that they antenna. The, the kind, look, you need to see where we're living then. You need to see how we're living, how we're suffering. How people despised us, talked, you know. But I kept my faith, thank you. I kept my faith in Jesus. I kept going. I knew that tomorrow would be better. How it's going to be better, I have no idea. But I stayed with Jesus. Those same people today now can't tell me, can't deal with me, can't do to me what they did to me then. They can't despise me no more. It's not because I'm proud, but my faith in Jesus has been defined to be the victory that I need for life. Am I making sense here? Don't let any devil, anybody distract you. You don't need any prophet. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Sit down, please. He said, this is the victory. We know what the victory is. Anybody can remove your signboard from anywhere. It doesn't matter. 
Your success is not design. Before design board came, were you not here? <laughs> you have been here. You have been around conquering your territory. Abanandeta. To put something in your spirit. I came to ignite something here. Am I making sense? You should live here knowing ah, the person I believe is the custodian of everything. The prophet is not in charge. His prophecy can still be a lie. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said his prophecy can still be a lie. His prophecy can still be an error. I don't care how sharp he think he is. He can still be speaking by the devil. But the one I believe in, look, 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 whom the father has appointed, Jonah, the father has appointed the head, not of some things, all things. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is there anyone that comes to me? Though you were thirsty, I will quench the thirst. <laughs> Is there anyone that you were hungry? You were hungry no more. The father has handed over everything to me now. I've been charged. I'm the custodian. Let me get everything now. So what are, which prophet are you going to? So as you are going, he's calling you. Come back. Leave that guy. He said, no, Jesus, leave me. Let me go and see my prophet. He said, who is, who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? Ah, yeah. Who is your prophet? Then, because of the seriousness of this debate in their time, the writer of the book of Hebrews now got to chapter 3 in verse 1 of the NIV translation. See Bible now. Don't they do me like that. I smoke something. The debate was so serious in NIV translation. Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts. We are now on Jesus. Yes, I was. We were all discussing the matter. <laughs> fix your thought on Jesus. Watch, 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 watch. He now said, the Apostle. Apostle means somebody sent. He's the one that the Father sent. He didn't send prophet again. Any prophet that does not acknowledge Jesus in your life, the Father did not send that prophet. He is the one the Father sent. And look at, not just sent, and the Father also made him high priest. That means whatever the evil, the juju, the witch in your village, behind your case, Jesus was sent as an high priest on your behalf to the Father concerning that juju. Yeah, somebody didn't hear it. And do you know when Jesus take your case before the Father, against anything, that thing will not survive. I said it will not survive. I have never gone to anybody to see vision for me before. Never. The camera here. If I have ever come to you to see vision for me or to tell me dreams, come out and say it publicly so I disgrace me. But if I didn't come, you come out. You now say VJ came to meet you. You will catch fire. What are you talking about? Sit down and let's lock this thing. Look, so many people have left me. Oh. People I trusted have left me. I still never went to any prophet. But prophet, what did they do me? Help me see what did they do me. There's nobody that not leaving. Even Jesus Almighty God, they left him. Twelve, twelve is up. <laughs> Jesus Almighty God, they left him. Okay, even before he came, God. Wait now, before Jesus came, I was reading the book of Jeremiah. God said to him, He said, Go and tell this people they are forsaking me. No, is that not living the him? A whole nation, Israel. They said, Get out. They left him, they abandoned him. And he was like, Israel, turn to me. I am your they said for where? The matter was so serious 
that the Holy Ghost now eventually looked for the house of Peter. When he found it, entered. Peter was at home sitting down. Just as he was about to eat, the Holy Ghost said, don't eat yet. Help me write and send to the church. What am I supposed to write? Peter asked him. He said, Holy Ghost said, oh Peter, what you have to write is, tell them it is not strange concerning the very trials that has happened to you as though they are strange things. In First Peter chapter 4, in verse 12, he said, think it not strange. Your challenges are not strange. Your problems are not strange. Your situations are not strange. But while the Holy Ghost was talking to Peter, he went to meet Paul. He said, Paul, I didn't finish with Peter, but I want you to help me finish it. There is no temptation that has happened to you, but such as is common to man. He said, but with that temptation also, he will make a way of escape. There is a way of escape. Keep your heart, your eyes, your mind on Jesus. He will lead you like a shepherd out of that challenge. Uh, yeah. Somebody shout Jesus. What are you talking about? He was about to say, wait. Don't put the food in your mouth yet. Is that what I'm about to give you? <laughs> Is that what I'm about, about to give you a revelation? Somebody was at home crying and disturbing God. Lord, why me? Lord, why me? God said, don't, don't stop that. You know here. God said, stop that. Stop that. We help you. He said, no. Why me? He said, stop it. God said, okay. I know what to do. He went to the house of Peter. Peter, help me write quickly. Peter said, what do I write? He said, write that your fellow brothers that are in the war are going through the same thing that you are going through now. So when the letter got to that one, he read it. He said, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh. Not be only me. Oh. <laughs> That's why in the midst of our challenges, we rejoice. He said, with joy in tribulation. And it is with joy unspeakable. That even billionaires are envious of us. Rande Takasa. Watch. Let me flog this thing well. Am I making sense here? What are you talking about? We have found the way out. And it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, don't let anybody deceive you. With vain words. Deceptive words. Words born out of the tradition and the thinking of men. Our thoughts should be on Jesus. In John chapter 7 verse 37 and 38. John chapter 7 verse 37. Dear friends, look at this. John chapter 7 verse 37. In the last days, that great day of, of the feast, Jesus stood and shouted, Saying, if any man thirst, the word thirst here means if anything is missing concerning you, if there's anything concerning you that is lacking or missing, he said, Let the person come to me. Come to me. Don't go to a prophet. I know that all those prophets will be angry with me now. Prophet, let me tell you. If you cannot dispense Jesus, you are doing Satan's job. You think of your prophet is to tell somebody, your father, is, uh, your father is in California. Your mother is in Ghana. Yes, Lord. Your junior brother is in Togo. You, see, that's, you, you think that's what it means to be a prophet? When God changed his address and approached Paul said he has revealed the gospel to his holy prophets and apostles. Gospel. 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 Not to tell the people what their soul is looking for. Gospel. The psalmist said they desired things apart from him. So he gave them their desires. But he sent leanness into their souls. They were not satisfied with what they had. What he, what he gave them did not bring satisfaction. So when Jesus came in John chapter 6, he said, I am the manna that came from heaven. 
He said, not the one your fathers ate. He said, they desired it. And after, they eat, after eating it, they died. But whoever will eat my flesh and drink my blood. He said, if you thirst, come to me. If you thirst, if anything is missing concerning you, come to me. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. They're moving away from all these material things. Look, Jesus is about to come. A lot of people are not ready, looking forward to him. Their faith is not in him. They say they are born again. He doesn't know them. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. <laughs> you want us to define it? Thank you. Suddenly, there was confusion in, in, in the church at Corinth. Holy Ghost say, Paul, pin it down, pin it down. Let every man examine himself whether he's in the faith. Pin it down. Let every man examine himself whether he's in the faith. He said, otherwise we would have believed in vain. That means some of them are not born again. But they are speaking in tongues. They were joining them to do a do 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 He said they were not born again. Check yourself. Are you in the faith? Because can you be writing that to a born again Christian? Assessment to burn it down. Let them know. Any small thing you are complaining. Any small thing you are afraid. Any small thing you are fidgeting. Are you in the, were you born again in the first place? Were you born again? Where is the element of the spirit of boldness? Who, who, who told you you are born again? Is, is it the prophet that told you you are a Christian? Or the Holy Ghost bore witness with your spirit? Because you can't be born again. Your first reaction at everything is fear. Where spirit? Where spirit? Yeah. Eh? The only time you are excited to go to church is when they say it is covenant day of judgment. Who are you judging? When will you judge yourself? <laughs> Who are you judging? When will you judge yourself? The back. God said, once more, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Just for one reason. So that the things that should remain should remain. And the one that is not supposed to remain should fall away. But what do you think the shaking is? Ah, you never know anything. There will be money scarcity. Things will be hard, tough. But some of us we will say, no, 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 no. We know what is happening. The trial of your faith worketh patience. That's why we will count it all joy as we fall into diverse temptations. We're not serving him because of Rolls Royce. As a matter of fact, it doesn't reward anybody with Rolls Royce. Let me shock you. Put it here. Put, put the camera here. All you these young ministers in Lekki. That you are posing with G Wagon. You are posing with G Wagon and posing with Rolex Rick Swatch. Clean suit. It's not Jesus that gave you. Jesus will never reward anybody with G Wagon. He will never reward anybody with Rolls Royce. Look, David Doe has Rolls Royce. Eh? He has Rolls Royce. You want to tell me Jesus that rewarded him? A boy. Don't know anything yet. You're a monkey. If you think that's your reward from Jesus Christ, you're a monkey. Get angry. The only thing you will do is that you won't listen to me again. But I'm saying it out of love for you. I need to snatch you from the jaws of Satan. Let me make it more difficult. Mr. Private Jet. 
It's not a reward. It's not a reward from Jesus. Don't go to get. As a matter of fact, the jet Nigerian ministers are using to boast. So many Hollywood uh, actors and actresses in America, they have it. Most of the jets these Nigerians are boasting with is Tokumbo. Secondhand jets. There was a time I was going to buy jet. I was in America. I went to look for jet. This one single uh, wing thing. I went to in, ni- in, in 1999. I went there to negotiate to buy. And then they told me it's $50,000. Third hand jet. Yes. They were, I will pay. And then they will fold it for me. Put it inside plane. Ship it to Lagos for me. I got there to pay. To pay. When I now thought of it again. And I asked. They now told me about the payment. Yes. Not even maintain The payment at the airport. Anger. To pack it. I would have bought plane a long time ago. Look. My friend. Uh, um, Pastor Jeff took me there. Took me. Took me. He was, and then give me the offering, the honorarium put to buy the jet. I'm not joking. I'm telling you the truth before God. I would have bought jet. That time, I wanted to really buy jet to just bring to Nigeria for myself to just be using. I have no idea of make, making it commercial or anything, just to reuse, to fly about, to just depose. Until I was delivered by God. It was $50,000. I went there. I, it was from magazine. We looked for, looked for, looked for. So I went there, sat down, negotiated. Oh, I, at the end of the day, I just changed my mind. Uh, just, uh, there was a time in this country, everybody, every pastor, every minister want to drive Concord Mercedes Benz. If you don't know Concord, don't worry. If you don't have Concord Mercedes Benz, you are not called by God. Today, if they dash you Concord Mercedes Benz, you will swear for the person that dash you that Benz. Look, nobody will be rewarded in this world by the Lord Jesus. Nobody. You know, somebody heard me say that one time. Let's say, Apostle, I don't agree with you. Jesus said, if any man forsake father, mother, and everything, and follow me. He said, say, we'll get hundredfold in this world. Father, mother, husband, wife, uh, children, anything, blah, blah, blah. I said, wait. Let's, Shibina, you quote, and let's analyze it. Go, it's there. He said, you will get hundredfold wives. That means anybody, why your wife they disturb her? Leave the woman. Just go and get hundred wives. You got a hundred fold. See what Allah. I mean, if you see that right now, nobody's agree with that scripture again. <laughs> it's there. That's what he said in, in, in Matthew. That you will get hundred fold in this world. Wives. So is Jesus saying. Go and marry 100 women. There are types and shadows. Don't take one part and then you, you, uh, you start running. Do you know if that thing is true, I can get to a point. Start getting angry with mama. Because I'm just looking for how to. What are you talking about? So that my 100 folk can have it. The next. Service will have it, and I'm coming. My three class will say they come. They got me and my hundredfold. <laughs> and then, whether you will come or not, it doesn't matter. My hundredfold will fill this place up. <laughs> Jesus is the end, the knowledge of Jesus and Jesus himself and faith in him is the end to all deception. The end to all forms of deception. 
You can't use Jesus to deceive anybody. Because where are you going to preach it from? That's why they don't like to preach about Jesus. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 2. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 2. Help me. Hit me. With Galatians chapter 5 verse 2. He said, behold, I, Paul, who? I, Paul, talk to me. Who? I, Paul. What happened? I say unto you that if you be circumcised, if you be circumcised, GTBT winning circumcision. I'm telling you, Christ will profit you nothing. If all you are going after are the things they are giving you instead of the knowledge of Jesus and to help you come to faith in Jesus, Jesus will not be profitable to you. Just discover that it's all man of. Because what do you, what do you, go and check internet, social media. You see pastors, all they are after is clean suit. They are supposed to be shining and glittering like this. That's all offering and tight now suit that they take and buy. God has become the uniform of a man of God. Yes. The, the auditorium will be glittering. They put, they put all kinds of... All ki Look, when Jesus and the knowledge of Jesus is not promoted in the church, physical entertainment is what takes over the church. Entertainment will just take it over. That's why they are always having this one choirs. Why are we sing for almost 10 hours? Then when it's time to preach, it's because you don't want to get the people to be tired. You just 15 minutes, and give a session for 15 minutes. The church is dead. That church is dead. That church is dead. Just putting grave cloth on the dead people. They can't endure sound teaching. They can't, they can't sit down to hear no more. Talk to them about Jesus. They will start sleeping. They are tired. They are tired. They are fed up. Why is he talking about Jesus? Why is he just talking about Jesus? Eh? Why is he talking about Jesus? He doesn't have to tell us that this Egyptian we saw today. We will see them no more. If they burn you well, go to Egypt in Cairo. And go and preach the Egyptians you see today. Or you saw today. You will see them no more. Uh -uh, true. You will not see them again. When the Egyptian finish with you. <laughs> He won't see them again. Those Egyptians will help him not to see them again. <laughs> the other day we closed from fellowship. We were going home. And I saw on the road big posters everywhere. Last night in Egypt. I said, what did you go there to do? They came out over 2,000 years. 4,000 4, 4, years ago. They came out from Egypt. How did you get there? How did you enter Egypt? That is now becoming the last night. You need to go out. Something is wrong. And you will see people last night in Egypt. They are going to Egypt to, to, to do last night there. He said Christ will profit them nothing. Look, that, that somebody's church is bigger than your own. It doesn't mean they are doing better than you. They are not. I'm telling you. They are not. There are two groups of calling. And everybody is towards the same ministry. Hey, Jesus. Can I say it again? How many groups of calling? Two groups. Towards the same ministry. The ministry is reconciliation. No matter who you are. And that reconciliation is to God through Christ Jesus. But the calling is either you are a planter or you are a waterer. Because one plant, the other one water. But guess who gives the increase? God. 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 So forget about increase. It, it, nobody is called to increase. No, it's not a calling. 
He decided to be in the ministry of increase himself. You know why? Because the devil is out to give increase. So if the increase is not from him, it's from the devil. So the true calling, the two stages groups of calling is planting or watering. As for the increase, it's not yours. He said, leave that one. No! The increase is his own ministry. That's his ministry. So whatever you are doing, if he keeps you at the level you are, that's what he wants for you. Nobody is doing better than you. One plant, another water. He said, but it is God specifically that give it the increase. It's not saying that when the church is plenty, that is God. No. That's not what it means. You need to go and read the original translation. It's showing that whatever level you are, that's what he wants for you. Be faithful there. Take care of it. The man of God said, we've never borrowed before. Never. Not once. Never borrowed before. Meanwhile, their first generator, their first generator, 10 kVA, they went to collect it on credit. It was later, they harassed people in the job to donate money. So as to go and pay the Igbo man they collected it from. What are you talking about? In verse 4 of, Ephes- of Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. See Bible now. Verse 4. Put verse 4. Sharp, sharp. He said, Christ is become of no effect. No value. No importance. Unto you. Whosoever you are. Justified by the law. He said, you are falling from grace. Jesus is not useful to a lot of people. That's why they are going from one prophet to another. Looking for. They are looking for which prophet. And these prophets are just talking rubbish. Hear their messages. They can't explain simple gospel about Jesus. Anybody can preach anything. But you have to be empowered and energized by the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel. You can't. He said he made us able ministers of the New Testament. You have to be enabled by the Holy Ghost. You can't preach the gospel without being enabled by the Holy Ghost. That's how we know whether you have God or not. Not by prophesying. Anybody can prophesy. The witch doctor in my village, the abalist, the Ogoni man, the juju man in my village can prophesy. Can tell you what is wrong with you. Am I talking to somebody here? But that man can't preach about Jesus. It takes being enabled by the Holy Ghost. We are able ministers of the New Testament of the New Testament the New Testament is not something that just came out of idea it came out of the life of God that was poured out through the blood of Jesus so for you to operate the New Testament you got to know Jesus you must know Jesus you must know Jesus you must know Jesus Teach about Jesus, let's hear. And know that you are a man of God. Just teach us about it. Let's hear. If you are listening to anybody on the internet and he is not bringing explicitly the knowledge of Jesus, you are a baby. You have been captured as a, a fool. You have been deceived. I don't care how he's exaggerating it. Sir, you say you are sent by God. Teach about Jesus. Let me hear. The knowledge of Jesus brings satisfaction to human soul. Learn of me. (laughs) And you will find rest for your soul. Just learn of me. Rest for your soul. 
It's because the people that are teaching you. You see, when I'm talking, you should know that I'm not just talking to you people. So don't, don't feel offended. Ah, Papa, we, we know now. No, you should know that I'm talking to also to people who are not here through the internet. Man of God, bless you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you people don't, don't, it's like, ah, Papa. no, no, no. So just, you know, uh, you people are here to just encourage my faith. Because if I was here alone, you know, If they are flogging you, dragging you up and down with night vigil, you're a babe. You've been deceived. You have been deceived. Yes, some of them will be angry now. Wait till night vigil do I make it? Go and sleep. Sleep where? Sleep where? What are you looking for in night vigil? Whatever God cannot answer in the daytime, He can't do it in night vigil. See, even charity itself don't bow. Finally. Because she don't do night bitch tire. Now she's wondering, what else do I do? Wicked men of God. Wicked prophet. In the morning, he's inside AC at home. In the afternoon, he's inside AC in the church office. Or wherever he's doing business. In the night, before night bitch, he's at home again, sleeping inside a conditioner. You now gather women and men with the under sun sees. He said, if you don't come to the night video, you are missing your destiny. That's what those ones are going to What is it? That, look, anybody that they want to tra- uh, threaten, it's destiny they used to threaten them. And glory. Yes. <laughs> Say, the destiny, wherever they bury it, this Friday, we will locate it and bring it out. If you miss this Friday, you have missed your destiny. Come and see. Come and see God, people. Yeah? Destiny changing VG. Or Bob Mumu. Now, now VG, they change your destiny. You ever know this? You have a long journey. <laughs> destiny changing VG. <laughs> but to remember <laughs> if you are still going for night BG, you have been deceived they don't do Pashi Paro for you do you know what they did for you Pashi Paro go and google it the more you look <laughs> the less you see <laughs> only you only you brand new year. You are doing 100 days fasting. How many days are in a year? 365 days. And you take only, all, all, use 100, ah, almost half to do fasting. When you go drink water well, when will you hear drop fatness for you? Wake up! Thou that sleepest, arise from among the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Christ is become of known effect. No, no, I've gone past that one now. Huh? Okay, just leave it. Let me quote it for them. Wherefore, he said, Awake! The word awake here, yeah, I checked it up. It means your consciousness. That's what G. Wake up your consciousness. Hey, daddy, that the prophet, you are deceiving us since. Eh? You, you have been sleeping in this high condition. You come and put us where mosquitoes they bite us. I will come tonight, VG again. Oh. Awake! Thou that sleepest. Arise from among the dead. He said, and Christ shall give the light you are looking for. Christ will give it to you. That's why they are not inviting me to their churches. Because we will stop them from taking the people as slaves. There's one more scripture. Can I give you one more scripture? No, no. I said, can I give you one more scripture? Look at that, that, that same Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. 
Is it verse 14 or, or verse 4? Sorry, verse 1. Verse 1. NIV translation. Verse 1. Everybody look at this. Galatians 5 1. Galatians, Galatians, not Ephesians. Everyone watch this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stand fast. Do what? Stand fast. Nobody's going to help you to stand. Even God cannot help you to stand. You do the standing. He said, It is for freedom. Yea. Yeah. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm in that freedom. You see, before Jesus came, everybody was under obligation. When it is time to pray, you must go to the wailing war. I'm a few. How many of you have seen him before? They never see me. What are you talking about? They say, eh? Papa, know the music. No, I'm not there for Nigeria. Get out of town. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? As a man of God, you are not supposed to be hearing music like that. Get out of town. They were arguing the same thing in the church of Corinth. He got out to fight. Religious people, holy other that people. They say, oh, 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 oh. Holy Ghost now go to the, the house of Paul. He look for Papa was not at home. He, as he's looking for him, he was in prison somewhere. Holy Ghost now entered the prison. He said, Paul, oh, you are here. He says, I hear you are here. Don't worry. I will take you off your case later. But I came for something express. <laughs> Holy Ghost, what did you call? Say, what did you call for? Say, just listen to me carefully. Let me tell them. Tell them. Write to them at church at Corinth. Tell them. If unbelievers invited them to party and they're not busy, they should go to the party. It's not a sin. They should go to party. <laughs> who, who is inviting Christians to the party? Unbelievers. And do you know unbelievers are not going to be singing? This is the day. Another day, what would they be singing there? I am not available. They know they see me. That's what they be singing there. But the Holy Ghost said, Paul, right to them. Let them go there. Go, go, go. Eh? No, no, they sit down for us too much. They, 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 it's not a sin. <laughs> That's why you are you are too boring. You are attacking yourself. Angry with yourself. Sometimes carry yourself by yourself. For yourself. With yourself. Go in Kenya shopping mall. Enter cinema. Go and watch Rush Hour 2. If they don't have Rush Hour 2, watch Terminator. If they don't have Terminator, watch James Bond. Or at least watch Jackie Chan. When you finish, your mind will be fresh. The anointing will increase. He said to be free. That's why Jesus came. All those bondage that con constrain people into one realm. He said Jesus came to set us free from them. Now you are free. Go. go. Yes. You need to see people talking to God. Fuck! Fuck! Da! Fuck! Fuck! Have you seen some youth these days on social media? Te, 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 ka, ka, tu, tu, che, che, te, 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 ta, ga, ga, ta. They say they are praying. They are just whiling away time. They are friends. They are friends. Because there is no place to go and play. No place. No playground for Nigeria. They don't, there's no, there's no playground. So they now don't church to playground. Men are called. Two of you come. Chap, chap. Come, come, come. Oh, yeah, yeah. You come quick. Okay. Join them. 
See them on the social media. I am on the road. Carry speaker. Put it below. Look. Honestly. <laughs> you see, here, let me tell you. Sit down. Let me tell you. The reason you are doing all this all this gymnastic thing you call prayer sometimes hunger if God use your body carry you go buffet correct buffet that when you finish you want to your job it might be small like this but it's 120,000 you will see that you wake up you wake up Poverty is a bastard. The man is hungry. But because he doesn't have money, he turns into fasting. That's why God says, okay, you want to be justified by the works of the law. Christ will profit you nothing. Why are you turning into fasting? Tell him, Father, I'm hungry. I need you to move somebody. I don't care who the person is. Move somebody. Even my neighbor is Muslim. Move him. Even my neighbor is an Abalis. An Abalis. Let them come and do sacrifice for him. So I let him share their sacrifice of that yam and that rice. I'm not talking to somebody here. Someone say, hey, Apostle, you say Abalis should share sacrifice of rice. Get out of town. They were fighting in the church of Corinth. Suddenly the Holy Ghost went to meet Paul. He said, Paul, come on. Come on. I don't hear another one. Paul said, you have heard another one. Say, I have heard. I heard. Paul said, what did you hear? He said, my people are hungry. And I, I move all these unbelievers to bring sacrifice to the Abalis. So that the Abalis can share rice with them. They said, they're not going to chop. Help me write. <laughs> pen it down. Now, so Paul carry pen. Holy Ghost, what do I write? He said, write. That the earth is the Lord's. First of all, whatever they bring to you, not be the devil get them. Not the Lord get them. Because it came from the earth. He said, number two, right. That there is no other God except one God. Number three, he said, whatever food they bring to you, eat, asking no question. Yeah. Yeah. Now some people carry letters sent to them. He said, you these Christians, as you are hungry, and you are crying out to God to feed you, that's why he moved them. Because he knows you, they will not bring the sacrifice to you. He brought it to the Abalis next to you. So that he knows that when they bring it, he will cook it and share it with you. It's God that is supplying your need according, 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 according to his own, his own, his own, his own. Not according to your own, according to his own. Ah, yeah. They are believing God for breakthrough. Because that you met somebody. He said they are doing prank. Carry one thousand dollars like this. Throw at you. Say, ah, ah, don't touch me with you. I don't know what else I can do. Yay! Yay! He said whatever they throw at you, receive it with thanksgiving. How are you supposed to receive it? Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know something like this. You go give me one thousand dollars. <laughs> There's a woman I saw on the internet. The guy just came. Oh. I'm an ayada. <laughs> this boy just showed up. This woman is telling Bolly. On internet, on social media, TikTok. The boy just carry 100,000, no, 10,000. Throw the woman. Waka, come on. Hey! He's an Natasha. Spirit. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I won't touch it. Though. I don't know what to think I do. Blood of Look. He said, first of all, you should know. Yeah, that's true. And then we'll get we we'll call her and give her. He said, I don't think. Which I saw the way 
You need to see the woman. Very pity. And I had like 10,000 naira on me or 5, I can't remember. I said, Madam, take. <laughs> I don't take. He said, Blood of Jesus. I'm not going to collect them. Blood of Jesus. I'm not going to collect them. Meanwhile, Holy Ghost, Paul, write to them. Tell them the earth is the Lord's. Even where they caught the money from. I'm not even know this uh, paper. I'm not even know paper came from tree. I'm not even know tree came from the earth. I don't even know the earth belongs to the Lord. So he said, whatever they bring your direction, receive it with thanksgiving. Father, thank you. Please, those of you that is in our court and Oboli, they are looking for who to give your car, your house, your money. I'm available. Then they reach me. And they see me for this one. <laughs> All this nonsense. You must have said blood of Jesus. I was, I was looking, I said, look at you. Uh, blood of Jesus. Are you hungry? I thought, now I collect my money. Waka, come on. Look, let me tell you. The number of time you spend in prayer is not what makes God hear you. Now has as well. Even without praise. Jesus said your father knows what you have need of before it became a knowledge to you. You see what Jonah will need tomorrow? He doesn't know it yet. But God knows it in advance. So when tomorrow now comes, it becomes a need. And so Jonah they've conditioned us wrongly. So Christ is not beneficiary to us. It doesn't profit us anymore. We can't say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you to send somebody to me urgently. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Some people, they have been so brain damaged that they can't do that. You know, you want to ask God for anything, and you want it to happen, you need to ascend a realm in the spirit. When you ascend that realm, that is the realm that men communicate with, all, with Almighty God and descend into the earth. And then they dominate the earth, and then they change the fact of the earth. This bloody liars. How many of you have heard of those, that boy? I'm waiting for the day I will meet him face to face. Yes, you, 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 uh, you enter into portals. You, you, when you enter into that realm, you now begin. When he's collecting Titan offering, talking, using, uh, using English and uh, cement, semantics, have you semantics, semantics, semantics to confuse people. You, 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 when, you, when you enter, and then another one came and said, there's code. Code. Sound code. You, you, you need a code. When you enter the code, you now, you know. He said, be no more babies. Don't be babies. Toast, toe, and fro. What are you, what are you looking for? Edwin, what are you looking for code for? Did you get born again by code? How many steps did we give you in code? That you were filled with the Holy Ghost. People just go in. Look, a man can be so bored with conjunctions. He's not a bad man. And I bored him. <laughs> I'm telling you. Ask me, how do I know? No, I, I, I do. Ask me where. Okay. In Mark 11 24. The book of Mark 11, 24. Let me show you. Now, I want to show you my hand. So, yes. He's my son. I want to show you my hand. There's also ask my father, how did you know? Not how did you know? Next time, if you ask me, how did you know? Without pulling my father, I say, what I did to him. 
Therefore, Jesus, oh, watch, oh, I say unto you, whatsoever thing you want, you desire, when you do what? Pray. What, what will happen? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. There is no code. No code. No code. You don't need to enter any room. You are there already. <laughs> this is not Prophet Jeremiah that said this. Oh. This is Jesus himself. Just to complicate things for people and to make them look superior. They are too much. Look, let me tell you. It's not all of us that should perform miracles. It's not everybody. So the one that is God is using to do miracle is the one that is always trying to complicate things in the realm of the spirit. That's why there's one man one time. He's fizzled out now. Positive supernatural and negative supernatural. When the positive supernatural meet with negative supernatural, the negative supernatural will submit to the positive supernatural because the positive supernatural is always greater than the negative supernatural. And then in the realm of the positive supernatural, as we operate by God, because the negative supernatural by witches and wizards, they like to copy themselves and then operate negative supernatural power. But the positive supernatural power of God is <laughs> <laughs> <It's> a physicist. <laughs> All the sukukubus and bubus. I told one of his pastors, I said, Your guy goes to expire. He never don't say that. I said, I'm telling you, he will so expire. Positive supernatural. Like, who, who, where? Where? I don't understand where we got these things from. Trying to move people away from the simplicity of the gospel. Wake up in the morning. Give him thanks. Go your way. We have added all kinds of things. Most people don't preach the gospel. They preach their experience. Listen to me. Please, I beg you. Hear this one now. I'm begging all of you. Don't follow anybody's experience. Because the person's experience, as at the time he had the experience, is operating at a level of knowledge. That level of knowledge he was operating in, you were at, you had grown it. If you don't maintain your growth, it will bring you down to your level by sweet talking you. They use smooth words. If you try this in 30 days, try this in 30 days. Every 12 midnight, pray for one hour. 3 p.m. 3 a.m. Pray for one hour. 6 a.m. Pray for one hour. You will see what will begin to happen to you. You see, that was his level of ignorance. So he had to go through that those works routine for him to break out of himself, not from the devil. The devil has nothing to do with it. He's himself. Himself. He's warring with himself. You know, there was a time that God fought with himself. There was a time God fought with himself. That time was when God was going to raise Jesus from the dead. Because God had declared that it is appointed, I appoint for man to die once. Once he dies, just can't come back. So now. Jesus is about to be resurrected. God had to undo his own word. So raising Jesus from the dead was not demons that were holding Jesus. The Bible says it was no longer possible. That should be held down in Acts chapter 2 verse 24. So what was holding him that God needed power to raise him from the dead from? God needed to raise Jesus from the dead from himself. Because he has said, once you die, you can't come back. But now, his son has to come back. His flesh must not see corruption. So God summoned the greatness of his power against himself. Against what he has said. Because he has said that every word that goeth out of the mouth of God shall not return back void. But now the word is about to be reversed. So he, he reversed his own word by the greatness of his Power. I'm telling you. Thank you. I'm telling you. They said, when Jesus landed in hell, all demons held him. Because that's what they taught us. That's what I grew up with. That when Jesus landed in hell, all the demons just descended and come hold them. You have come here. Before Jesus died, the psalmist said, You will not suffer the flesh of the anointed one to see corruption. That means you must keep your word for him. Because it's against God's word himself. So this new promise you made to him is against your word. 
So you must keep this new word that you made to him. So when Jesus was about to die, he said, look, in your hand I commit my spirit to. Because remember what you promised me. Guys, this is going to put a demand, a strong demand on you. So the Bible said when it was time to raise Jesus from the dead, he summoned the exceeding, the greatness of his mighty walking. No, walking. And then power, five things. Everything that makes God, God. He pulled them together. Because his own word was standing as God against him. For Jesus to resurrect. So he pulled everything together. Look, when God created in, universe, uh, in Genesis, it was words. Let there be. When he made my hand, for when it was time to raise Jesus from the dead, because he is the one that is again. After that time, God does not demonstrate his greatness of his power anymore. He put it inside man. He said, I've shown you what this greatness of my power can do. Summon it. Everything will come out for you. Don't let them take you to night vigil. <laughs> and he said, the only key to it is faith. Believe. The greatness. Of his exceeding. Mighty. Walking. Power. He called everything to play. Even Satan was afraid. All demons. They've never seen him like that before. They took off now. No, everything took off. The Bible said the graves, nobody touched it. There was no angel that touched any grave. The graves just, all the graves popped open. Everybody that had died, their grave opened up. Nobody touched it. Because something has ever, the earth was afraid. Is he going to use it to turn, to turn against us? The earth was afraid. Whether the father will use this thing. Because if you are using it to turn against the earth. Oops. He shouted, My son, get up! Come and see. In the river. Look, if I write the resurrection of Jesus as a movie, what are you talking about? <laughs> Everybody dead. All demons in graveyard took off. But they are about to see the side of the Almighty that they have never seen before. Do now drag us into what the name of Jesus three times, call the blood three times, call, 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 call fire four times. Uh, they put, put, put water inside a bucket, put stone, seven stones inside. Hi. When he demonstrated this power, raising Jesus from the dead. The Bible said he now put it inside of us. Believe us. One man looked at me one time. He said, if I beat you with this thing, if I beat you with it, you're going to urinate. I said, me. I go urinate. Oh, the Pemu preacher. With all those boys selling in the side goes. See? Okay, let's make a deal. If I not urinate, if I slap you, you see thunder. So it's that. My brother, that's a policeman, he stood behind me. And he's a Christian. He's a, he's a reverend. You don't bring us Ringo. You don't bring us Ringo. When he hit me with the ring, now I do like this. And unfortunately, we will not catch me. So I, don't, I try, I try. I don't even we will say. Me say, oh, we will. Did the degree come out? Now nah, I don't give a slap. But he said, ah, you slap me. It's over. Those boys, those ogre. Come out here, I will go beat you. He said, go beat and we drink, we go with peace. You don't beat and I know peace. Now that you want to, oh, that they go. It's those boys that help me drown. <laughs> don't let the devil scare you with what God put inside of you. The exceeding, walking, mighty power is inside of you. Let me close with this. It is not the position you take when you are praying. 
that matters. You know some people when they are praying, if they are not loud, they don't believe God is hearing them. Now lie, now he, he won't hear himself. So as he's shouting and he's hearing himself, he now tells himself, God is hearing me. Apostle Zika told me and mama. There's a woman praying in her bedroom. Don't carry megaphone. The woman carry megaphone. Inside bedroom. All you powers of darkness. <laughs> all, you, all, all of you turn down and die. <laughs> because, because in the name of the spirit, they can't hear our voice again. <laughs> I wrote five things here. Let me close with these five, five things. Number one. That you are praying does not mean God is hearing. Some <laughs> people just feel that once they pray, they are praying. Automatically, God is hearing. Or God must hear. No. There's no scripture like that. As you are praying, does not mean God is hearing you. That's why there's something called praying and praying amiss. Anytime your prayer eh, comes to these two dimensions one, to mock somebody or to show off to somebody, God is not hearing you. Father, do it for me. Do it for me. Let them know my God is real. Let them know. I will show them. It's not only them. They, he who laughs, 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 laughs best. God is not here. God is not here. That prayer, God is not hearing it. They are laughing at me. They thought that, my God, prove that my God is not asleep. Prove that my God is not, is not, uh, I don't know what you know. God is not in this. Yes, they are with me. In James chapter 4, the Bible said in verse number 2. James 4, verse 2. Go there. Sharp, sharp. He said you lost. You lost and have not. You kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and you war. Yet! You have not. Why? All he's doing is, Father, anywhere where they tie me down, where they are holding me, where they are burying my glory, turn the fire there. Turn the fire there. All he goes, fire there. He said, you are worried. Is it the war you need or the request that you have? You see, they have so confused the church. And the church is not thinking well. All you are supposed to do, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I have come to you in Jesus' name. I need a new car. Help me, Father. You are doing anywhere. They said this car should not show up. Father, I send Holy Ghost fire. I send Holy Ghost fire. Destroy them. Destroy them. Destroy them. He said, why are you worried? That's why you are not getting what you want. Because you ask not. You are not asking for what you want. It's war that you are doing. You are worried. You see, war is different from asking for what you want. They say I shouldn't mention their name again. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to. Mountain on fire. Wait till do now. They're so miserable and frustrated. I, I'm, I'm saying out of law. Look at the scripture. He said you lost. You have not. And you kill. And you desire to have. And you have and you cannot obtain. 
He said, you war. You fight a war. Yet, what happened? You have not. Why are you always fight? Don't come, don't come and ask God for what you want. Every strong man in my father's house, my uncle, that said I should not move forward. Today, may your life be taken from you. May your life be taken. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. He think he's praying. That's the way you finish your jingoism. You go back. That's why they are always praying the same prayer. See, the reason is because they are not asking for what they want. Just simply ask. Father, I need to pay us rent. I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus to help me. Help me pray. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to help me. Thank you, Father. Don't go into war. Leave the war. Otherwise, God will not hear you again. You know, if it is war you want to go into, all right, shake it up. Then, you know the one that now shocked me? The next verse. Hey, but look at the next verse. Verse 3. Edwin, look at the next verse. See the Bible. He said, you, when, when they finally ask, they were not, ask, they were not asking before. They were worried. When they eventually now ask. Look, look at how they ask. He said, because they ask amiss. That's why not in them. At first, they were not asking, you know. They were worried. Fighting. When they become frustrated, because they are not seeing the thing happening. That's why they, oh God. Help me with a job now. Help me with a job. Eh? Father. See, see all this all this time I'll be asking, I'll be praying, pray. I'm looking for a job. Father. Don't say, ah, ah, okay. you don't finally ask. He said, but the reason you are not receiving now that you are actually asking is because you are asking Amis. So why are they asking Amis? Look at that you may consume it upon your loss. The reason you are asking God to give you a job is because you want to show that man. You want to show your uncle. Yes. Um, my, my uncle is not my God. My God will give me a job if you don't want to help me. Father, give me a job. So I want to show my uncle that my God is real. My God is alive. God so said, no, I don't do that. Yeah. Yes. You have, you have, I've, I've arrived. Yeah. I don't know anything. They'll be coming up with all kinds of phrases. Ungodly phrases. I want to show that you are the one that has best choir. Because of that, you want to read the Bible again. You can't even preach anymore. When you hold microphone down, Joshua is the servant of David. I'm, uh, what is his name? Servant of who said? Moses. Joman, I ain't swallow fish. Ezekiel, I ain't drive out Jeremiah. Ezekiel said he sat there, but he did not see it. He said, Then I came to them and sat where they sat. Then the word of the Lord came to me. And I saw the glory of God there. What you start doing because I want to show somebody. Huh? I'm not doing ministers and fellows because I want to show somebody that I can gather people 3 p.m. Sunday. No. Nobody else has crossed my mind since. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the only person that is doing what God said me to do. I don't know who anybody is doing whatever they are doing. Anybody is doing whatever they are doing, and God send them. Why should I be there? Come their class monitor. I say, Father, add to us. To show those people doing mon Sunday morning service that it is not only them that God is with. God is with us too at three o'clock. Show them. I don't have time. How many have I told you now about prayer? Is it one or two? One. Number two. No, I told you number two. Now being loud is not a guarantee. God will answer you. Number one is that praying long, the time, the length of time. 
does not mean that God is hearing. Number two is that being loud is not a guarantee that God will hear. Number three, whatever posture you assume does not mean that God will answer that prayer. <laughs> he said, Elijah, hold out his leg and put his head in between his legs. Do you know I am not that flexible? As for AVJ, I am not that flexible. Even for me to do like this. But so the light that folded his leg, sit down, sat down on the ground, and put his head in between his legs. Uh, what do you concern me? Who sent me? Me, I can't try it too. Yes, he, he, he's, he's, he used to go to gym. Elijah used to go to gym. Finally, prayer is not made powerful by fasting. <laughs> when I join 60 days to eat, fasting and prayer, you will see the power. Prayer is not made powerful, potent by fasting. How many now? Let me stop there because of time. So what is the power of prayer? What gives prayer power, potency? It's there in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians 4 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything. Talk to me. By prayer and supplication. Watch you. With thanksgiving. Let your what? Request be made known. What gives your prayer potency is thanksgiving. Don't pray as though God is going to do anything. He has done all. careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Let it be with thanksgiving. That is prayer and supplication. Let it be with thanksgiving. That way your prayer will be heard. How of you know that? God has already prayer requests. Write your prayer request and bring it. These days, they tell them to write it on the white handkerchief. That's why Bishop has this handkerchief. You know why Bishop has this handkerchief? <laughs> so Any time there's a need for prayer request, you write it on the white, plain white handkerchief and bring it. The reason they are doing it is because they want you to come to church. As a matter of fact, any prayer request, you write on handkerchief or paper. God does not answer. Because he wants the prayer to be in your mouth. And with thanksgiving in recognition of what he has done. I'm not here with you at all. Did you hear what I said? Eh? The king of Assyria wrote a letter and brought to Ezekiah. Ezekiah took it to the temple and put it on the altar. He said, oh God, see the letter they have written. Jesus has counseled that principle. He counseled it. He ended it. Whatever letter you need to write or anybody is writing to you, in the first place, it was not Ezekiah that wrote the letter. It was the enemy that wrote it to threaten Israel. So why should you write? Are you the enemy of yourself? Why are you writing letters? God does not read letters. You know, I got the revelation I was sharing with Mama. Maybe our next fellowship. I will share it with you people. Powerful revelation. Never thought of it. God does not speak any language. He doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak Igbo. He doesn't speak outside. He doesn't speak Yoruba. He doesn't speak nothing. God doesn't speak anything. 
But God speaks. So if you are not around, next fellowship, now you do yourself. When last time? When last time before I said that? Yeah, through thanksgiving, through thanksgiving, not through prayer requests, writing prayer on um, on piece of paper or handkerchief. All right. When you have made your request through prayer. No, with thanksgiving to God. You don't need anybody to be there. You don't need pastor. You don't need apostle. Bishop. You don't need anybody. There are two factors that I told you last time that governs Christianity. It is faith expressed by love. If you can live by faith, walking in love, there is no request you will ever have that God will not help you to meet. There's too many doubts and too many hatred. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Anyone that loveth is born of God. That means only Christians love. They are not here. The only set of people that are capable of loving and are loving are Christian. So if you are not loving, you are not a Christian. For he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. That's why the prayers are not being answered. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Let me close with that. The book of First John chapter 4. First John, First John, not Philippians. First John chapter 4. We gossip each other too much. We jealous each other too much. Envy each other. Even in this fellowship. Uh, Papa, I trust Papa. It's me who tell to hold microphone. It's me who tell. If he doesn't let me hold microphone, ah, then ah, I, don't, I don't believe in this Papa anymore. I don't believe in this man of God. Ah, you know something is wrong. Eh, eh, do, do you know? Do you know? Every time we come to fellowship, do you know every time we come to fellowship, they don't give me microphone to hold. They don't give me microphone to hold. I know what is going on. I know what they are conspiring against me. They are trying to show me I am not. I am not important. L- look at you. You are not working in love anymore. The devil has come for that person. Must everybody hold microphone in our fellowship? In your church, where you are the pastor of that church, is it everybody that's holding microphone? We must not all own microphone. Because you are not holding microphone does not mean now now everybody should not become your enemy. It may be your own test. Do you know whether that's my own test? Do you know whether that's my own examination? And I have to pass this test. And guess what? The man not even tell me about the thing at all. He just do as if another day. And do you know since he has not been calling me, I'm the one that has been calling him. Me, why before? Why they call me every time? So since he's not calling me, me, I now made it a responsibility. 
We call him all the time. Don't fail your test. In this country, by the grace of God, with all humility, I have one man Jesus sent to preach about Jesus Christ. Everybody knows it. If I'm preaching, I don't mention your name, you go verse. What did they do you? Just two Sundays in a month. You, you say you can't come. Uh, the pick up fence. What if we say every Sunday? Say, I will close late. I was doing counseling. That's why I can't come. Get out of town. If Dango they ask you to come after service, to come and collect one million dollars, will not be there. You bloody liar. Thank God to say by 3 p.m. Sunday, be in my office. The check, I'll be holding it for you. You will not be in service that day. As a matter of one million dollars, you will not be there. Because you, you just say, let, let me, let me, I, I know the Lord is asking me to go by 10. So they said 3 o'clock, we are going by 10. See, yesterday, it was a dream that put it on platform. Everybody, let's support our father. Let's mobilize. Let's only two people res responded added to what you said. If Edwin had said, everybody, my, fa my father is grieving us tomorrow, to two million naira. Please, everybody, let's pray for him so that tomorrow, the two million can reach all of us. Everybody will say, Amen. God bless our father. God, so that your name can, no, not that receive, so that your name can show there. So that by adventure, our father see you. See your name. You make sure your two million register. What is it? Beloved, let us love one another. He said, for love is of God. Look at this. Look at this. Wives, forgive your husband. Love. Love. Eh? How long will you keep hold? You know, it's natural for women. It's satanically natural anyway. It's not, you know, it's not godly. You know? Then they forget. The, all the good things the man don't do, now they remember. Now that one thing where you fail. You, you have not experienced it before. Chooks, you have not experienced it before. Uh, is that one thing you didn't do since 1901? He still reminds any time there is misunderstanding, will remind you that one. Say, so you remember in 1901? Uh, you remember 1901? Meanwhile, since before 1901, you have done uh, even your the only thing remaining now your blood. Now remember, but I remember that one. More big as well. <laughs> I'm telling you, wives, forgive your husband. Forgive. How long will you keep fighting? Fighting 101. International warrior. My husband knows me. Oh. My husband knows me. If I lock my heart, he don't lock out there, Mumu. And the devil lock him for you, not be you. The Bible says his person has come back into darkness. Whatever it is your husband did before, you don't want to let her go. Half a forger. That's all the amour. Say the warrior of Christ. Say what you have. The remembrance of what my husband did before. Get out of town, man. There's a time for war. It gets to a time, the Holy Ghost will just tell you stop. Once you refuse to stop, what you are praying for becomes what the devil used to start fighting the person. You must learn when to end the war. End the war. You can't keep going from one church to another church. You are fighting and angry with your pastor. Why? He said something I don't like. There is no boy that will not say something you don't like. Look, if a man keeps telling you everything you like, the man hates you. I know I've exceeded my time, but this one is Jara. Exceeded my time. End the war. End the war. And someone say, eh, I've not finished yet. Until God speak to me. He's speaking to you now. End the war. End the war. End the war. Let it be over. 
end the war. They that is of God heareth us. Because we are of him. So anybody that is not hearing us does not belong to God. It was a categorical statement. He that is of God heareth us. Because we came from him. We are his messenger. Whatever your uncle has done to you, forget. Leave it. Let it go. Your uncle is not God. Because you are still holding your uncle, that's why you are still in one same position. End the war. Leave it. Let it go. End it today. Am I making sense? End it when? Today. End the war today. End it. Whatever it is. End it. Yesterday I told Mama, I want bath. Come inside bathroom, we'll bath together. She said, no, she wants to go and do something. I said, okay. I left her. But I w- went to work. I saw that she was actually doing something. I left. Enter bathroom, my vow. Today, now she can enter bathroom. The bath. I opened the door. Bam! I forced the door. O- open. Now I enter. I said, that bath, go bath her together. <laughs> that bath, will bath it together. He said, does that mean I don't lock this door? Well, I said, your father not give me money for cement. We end this thing today. We'll bath together. I said, turn your back, man, and bath you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Then I take sponge and soap. They bath up for back. I bath the thing away. I said, rinse yourself. You help me stand up, tell somebody, end this war. End this war. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this war. Go help me tell somebody, end the war. That war must end today. It must end today. I, 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 look, you must bat the bat today. Oh. Apostle, God's word said you must bath that bath today. That war must end. That bath must happen today. Mike, Mike, bath the bath today. End the war today. Uh-huh. Bath that bath. What are you talking about? You must tell you. It's very important. <laughs> the bath, you must bath it today. Bath it. What are you talking about? If you see the way I held the bathroom door with strength, with the anointing, push that one, see open. I said, that bath. Bath. We heard this thing. Now me by my hand lock the door. I said, bath. After I'm, I'm inside the bathroom. Did I borrow money from anybody to build the bathroom? I can carry him and break that bathroom. Uh-huh. must bath it here. And they tell the man of God to leave the fast and prayer. He must end the war. He must bath that bath tonight. Tell him he must bath that bath. Tell him he must bath that bath. And he says you quote scripture. Uh-huh. Because he used to threaten the wife with doctrine. This man, he has read too much book. <laughs> the professor, book fully head. <laughs> you see, this, this, <laughs> this he had. If you open up, that book full of. He called the exercise in intimate, intimidating power over his wife. Doctrine. Let's stop the war. That's a prophetic word, though. I didn't plan it. Even among the five of you who are my men, end the war. I didn't say people have war, but if it's war, you end it. End it. 
Don't do camp. One camp belongs to Ezekiel. One camp belongs to Jonah. I crush that camp in the name of Jesus. I didn't say there's a camp. I'm saying there should be no camp. It's not that if we don't give Jonah a microphone, Jonah will come become annoyed. What are you angry about? Must you hold a microphone every, every Sunday? The one you hold in your church today, is not enough. Have we given a piece of microphone to hold? Is this not sitting? My friend, sit down there. See, I'm still sitting down. No, I know my microphone. What are you talking about? Go and shake a bit and shake Jonah. And shake Jonah. Shake Jonah. Uh-huh. Men, I show everybody. Men, I show everybody. No, no. I'm not saying they are fighting. I'm telling. I want them to show all of you. All of us should be one family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We should all be one family. Where is uh, Kingsley? Carry yourself, come. Before you look like two of us. Where is Richard? Richard! Richard is looking like my uncle. Uncle, go and hug two of us. Simple. <laughs> They try well, well. Because these are my leaders. They are supposed, every one of us should show example. Are you hearing what I'm saying? During the conference, Jonah came to meet me. He said, my father, uh, my father, uh, let uh, Roxin preach. Is that what he told me? I told him, no. He said, Jonah, get out. I don't want Roxin to preach. If Roxin like me, he not come again. It was John and I was only sitting for him. He came. My father. When I still left, I got back home. He still coming from wherever I was. My father. Uh, you know, remember I said Roxy. I said, John, I have warned you. If you remind me Roxy again, you're in trouble. Look, I have paid the same thing. They are doing a program that I should be the main guest speaker. Now, I mean, I don't call invite at all. You know how many people have sent me messages? But I'm still here. What is spoil? Yes. Did they want you to push me now? Then I was out, not seeing animosity. From that point, my heart will become bitter. From bitterness, now, so the devil will move me. I don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere. You see, some of you who follow me will be there. We are shouting. Yes. Please, let the war end. So that our prayers can be answered easy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, even uh, Oji. Oji came to my house to paint. did a good job painting. But he delayed. The Vian battled him to a standstill. He came to meet me. We are warned him to come early. The next day, they told me Oji came. The Vian greeted and answered. Where's Oji? End the war. That's why I like Vivian. If you quarrel with you now, now, you don't finish. Tomorrow, Vivian will come and meet you and still talk to you. But you, if you are not born again genuinely, you will still carry off your heart. Once you agree to say, mm-hmm, good moon. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, you know how me now. You are blessed. You are a good man. Nothing to you. In Jesus' name. Now, Vivian, go and end the war with Vivian. Go. No use me as a camouflage. Go end the war with Vivian. End the war. Simple. What are you talking about? <laughs> Where is he? This will take advice from Bishop. War with women and follow come. If women not war with you, something is wrong with you. Yes. Something is wrong with you. Say, ah, my wife, no problem at all. Ah! It's a lie of the devil. You came from Outer space. Oh, Juju. You never see a woman who wants iron cloth. Plug the iron by herself. Plug up, got iron, burn her own cloth by herself. The woman got the blame someone when they sleep. Now inside dream, the person here said the cloth don't burn. <laughs> inside dream. <laughs> Talk.
Chop lock. Let the war end. Chop lock. What are you talking about? As I lie down like this, now inside dream, are they here? You see you, you see you, you see you, you go plug iron. Where I go plug iron like this? You call it up. So I, I open my eyes. Who, who is talking? I notice that I'm the person they are talking to. I say, what do I do? <laughs> if women don't attack you, you are not of God. It's follow come. That boy is preaching. He said, love your wife with all your heart. Like Christ loved the church. Like Christ loved the church. He never married you. Like Christ loved the church. Now he married three months later. He said, only God. Now you hold him back. Only God. You know, he knows what he would have done to that woman. I said, oh, oh, did that come on? He never married. He preached to us. What are you talking about? You never marry now. You won't come give us cancer. Go ask Mike. He go tell you. Mike and his wife from my office. I say, calm down. Mike, calm down. Now I ask the wife, you to calm down. You just calm down small. Look me like this. He said, Papa, you have been deceived. I say, eh? I've been deceived. Can you imagine that? In my presence, he's telling me I'm deceived. He said, Mike has deceived you. Wait, wait. <laughs> so as you are talking now I use I tell to Mike it's baptism now follow come you are not supposed to carry cross but I cross with this now I use I bet the wife I told the wife go outside I'm coming let me talk to your husband I say Mike go meet and give her a bottle of ice water because there's no way even only ghosts can't do this one just carry a bottle of ice water. Give her. Nay, sorry. What are you talking about? Men, I hail you. Twally, man. Twally. I'm talking to married men. Oh, Twally. Eh? Timothy, are you not there? Oh. Twally, man. Edwin. Twale, you too much. Uh, Julius, now you dare pass. I got what about them all. Roxy. Where is Kingsley? I call Kingsley. I say, Kingsley, how are you doing? He said, my father, I'm fine. I said, what of your wife? He said, she's stronger than me. Oh. <laughs> I said, confession. <laughs> he bowed. The first day, he came with his wife, came here. I was preaching. I was looking at his wife's face. I said, this man is very gentle. Very gentle. I reach out. I said, mama, pray for his Only God can help him. Because when this woman opened fire for this guy, that is the professor, I'm a professor. I lie. Now for our side. I'm a professor. I'm a professor. I read book. I said, this guy woman, if you spark fire here, the governor will show up. The governor. Look. The quiet ones that there was pass up. Hey! Because they start the thing they go. They get bank account. A, a strong and the bank account. Now strong room the thing they the way they open it, like, you? As is it, I go tell you. Mother, I better chop knuckle. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for Ignite. Thank you for Pastor Tokbe. Because Tokbe would have gone through fire and brimstone. But now he's standing here. Looking handsome. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Papa's wife, they here. Yay! I'm sure Papa don't see him win before now. Through or false. Oh. <laughs> How 
can you, a man, a woman came to report to you about her husband? You can't they flog the husband, flog the husband. Something's wrong with you. Suppose you use common sense. You should know that the woman will come report. The, look. Because as she's reporting, they fall out with tears. Because if she just report to you, you don't understand. <laughs> Finish. That's why he faced the man. You, this man, you are a wicked man. Why are you doing like this? The woman, because he said the tears could come drop or go down small. When you now want to turn to her to tell her her own fault, too. Like, <laughs> that is because of Jesus. That's why. <laughs> ah. Hello, Lou McBauer. Whether you are a man or woman, I bless you in the name of Jesus. But as a man, may God give you peace. Patience. Patience. Our men, may God give you patience. May you not be given to anger. Because anger destroys things. The peace of God rules in your heart. And in your family. I declare that from tonight, every spirit and it's trying to cause war in our home. It's rebuke in the name of Jesus. I cast them out of our homes. Thank you, Father, for our wives, for our women. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our ministries. Thank you for everything we stand to represent. We commit them to you afresh, including ourselves. Be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Please celebrate Jesus with a clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to give wherever you are. If this teaching has been a blessing to you to take up an offering and give. Giving is a part of Christian duty, Christian act, Christian obligation. So take up an offering wherever you are. You can be a part of it. Uh, whether you're in America, Canada, Australia, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, anywhere you are in the world, let the Lord use you to be a part of it in Jesus' name. You can do GT Bank. 0016864121 or access bank 143337375. Everybody take a seat. Transfer, do a transfer if you can. You know. Just give. If you can give 10. Give 10. And give. I like to encourage people to give well. Give. Especially if the word has been a blessing to you. Amen. So if you can give 10, give 10. If you can give 5, give 5 if you can. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord bless your giving and multiply your seed so. Use your phone, give. Take, take, up, take up an offering and give. Don't hold back. Giving is part of Christian obligation. And if you are giving cash, please come, everybody. In Jesus' name.